Brands going to Threads, and Twitter goes to X. This is Mac Voices. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Go to factormeals.com slash macvoices50 and use the code macvoices50 to get 50% off. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, the Mac Voices Live panel takes on some of the recent changes in social networks, including brands starting to adopt Meta's Threads network, and a change with Twitter going to a brand new identity. Let's go back and let the panel do the talking. Well, we do have some things we want to touch on tonight, other than Mac stock, um, for the folks out there that couldn't make it. Um, the first one, there been, there's been a lot of Threads news this week, um, and I, I just threw something in our in our chat room, and of course I have everything in our show notes. In fact, you know what? Actually, I think I can throw it in the chat room tonight because we figured out yes, how. You can. So. Chat room, you should see a link. Um, and we to do. one of the and first. All oh, right. Well, after all this time, we finally got it got it worked out. Um, but this was a story from Wired that um, th- brands are starting to appear on Threads. That you know, and and I, that's a really interesting development because brands, you know, mean advertising dollars. Brands mean you know a different dimension to any social network. And I'm not sure that we've seen any of the upstarts really catch fire with brands. Something I noticed though in my threads um, today, this week, uh, was, which was not so great, is the usual bots of some kind with, um, let's see, well, how should I say this? Scantily clad women following me um, <laughs> and sending a message you know, that they want to be my friend. And so, <laughs> That was kind of a disappointment to see that that's starting to carry over. But I also took it as an indication that this is a network, uh, a social network now that may be a force to be reckoned with longer term. Anybody have any feelings about Threads and their experience with it so far? Um, That's been exactly my experience, and it's not surprising because when it comes to advertising and business relations, Meta is king. Yeah, I mean that, that uh, that's I, where they got it. And I mean, Insta, yep. Insta, Instagram, that it feeds right from Instagram. I mean, Instagram is, was doing it uh, with the ads already. Um, now you even have a better, even better outlet from going from Instagram to Threads and then be able to see those ads as well as you know be able to post things differently that you could than you could on Instagram. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, again, I've advertising just clutters things up, but advertising is also the well, grease that makes pays those turn. <laughs> so, you know, it just it is sort of what it is. How many? I, we've done this before, but how many people are here are here are on Threads right now or so far? Yep. Okay, so not everybody, but. And I'm not even advoc- I'm not necessarily advocating for it. Well, um, I love the sub the uh, subheading, Chuck. The subheading said that could leave little room for people. Well, there's no room for people on fi- on any Facebook property anyway. So why should this <laughs> one be any different? <laughs> Good point. Good point. No, if it's owned by Facebook, I don't do it. No, I know you have strong feelings about that, Mike, and hey, that, that's <laughs> fine. You know, I mean, if you want to see strong feelings, though, uh, wait till you hear this. Um, wait till you hear what happens next. Um, Twitter, Twitter, it, well, Twitter is no longer going to be Twitter, X. or at least at some point it's not. It's going X. to be X. <laughs> and the bird it logo up. is gone, or is going, okay. or is gone, depending on it's how gone. you look at it. So... Yeah. You know, I happen, I happen to follow a link today from uh, on a just um uh, on a Discord chat about the Tour de France, and it it pointed to yeah. a Twitter post, and sure yeah, enough, there gone. was an X there. It's gone. Yep, it's gone right already. So, what do you mean, Jim? The you mean bird's the, gone the, on the homepage. The bird. The, yeah. the bird's gone. 
Yeah, but the twi- but the link to the post still worked, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, and it still said twitter.com. Right. That's one thing I'm wondering yeah. about is is all the you know, is the last 15 years of links all gonna stop working? Or will he will he keep it around just I you know, I could easily see him saying, screw it, I don't care if the links work. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's why uh threads has the uh opportunity it does because musk is an agent of chaos sometimes for better sometimes for worse what businesses and especially advertisers like is consistency Mm -hmm. i mean i don't know if you know the whole x everything concept with banking and blah 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 is going to work on in uh the long term but in the short term the advertising is down significantly uh we don't know if there's going to be a major change made tomorrow that will be implemented tomorrow and it's chaos well mark i would i I would comment you know a couple things you know i think um yeah, having been, you know, in a prior life, you know, uh, a very aggressive, you know, podcast advertiser. Um, the thing that's important is size of audience and reach. And the, the key question, I guess, for Musk you know, or anyone thinking about Twitter is, yes, there may be some turmoil as they go through some of these naming changes. But if that is uh you know a transition and they maintain their audience size or increase it afterwards you know that's that's positive for advertisers you know the wor- the worst feeling is you know you pay for n number of yeah you know, however you measure you know what it is you know impressions or you know, or reads or you know whatever you know users downloads you know there's different ways to measure these things and in reality you get you know 0.75 or 0.66 or mm. or 0.5 and you know that's uh that's a problem you know for for a lot of advertisers so there's there's a whole lot of you know, industry checks and balances you know to validate you know how big an audience size is and so on and so forth so it, it seems to me that you know, a lot of people sorry a lot of you know companies you know are standing back you know from twitter because it is very uh, tumultuous and there's a lot of turmoil. You know, it's not necessarily that they object to you know, changes going on, but until the rate of change sort of subsides, you know, and you know, c- can have you know sort of a normal you know value proposition to advertisers, um, you know, it's going to be really really difficult you know to uh, you know, for them to justify you know large you know, corporate level, you know, uh, major brand uh, advertising spend. So uh, against that, I'm not surprised that, you know, the thing about, uh, you know, Meta and Threads is it's new land grab, guys. This is very, very Mm -hmm. brand new. And, you know, people have to get out there and they need to establish relationships while it's still new and informative, you know, because if if you're late, it's going to be, very difficult, nigh impossible, and very expensive to try to capture new relationships and eyeballs. So you know, in, in that regard, I'm not surprised at any of these things. And I thought some of the most interesting thing is that uh, in, uh, in in the article that you know they're trying to adopt a more playful and, or they, in their words, sort of a playful and soft approach. And in my experience, that's the thing that always works. You know, this sort of like, you know, oh, well, we're selling XYZ soda for you know, 90% off. Do you, how many cases do you want to buy? You know, that sort of uh, crass uh, direct approach just really doesn't seem to work, you know, in a lot of social media contexts. So, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I think last week we were talking about they had a huge rise in subscribers and then there's a steep decline in terms of uh, daily usage. Uh, it, it's, it's still evolving. We'll have to see. Um, you know, let's, uh, you know, in, in September sometime, let's, uh, if there are, you know, usage statistics, let's review it then because 
and, and between now and then there's going to be just too many ups and downs and changes and it's summertime and people are on vacation and all sorts of other seasonal factors um you know that will occlude you know better insight into what's going on with this new platform i threw a couple of links to articles in the in the chat room but the it, it, it's interesting how many people seem to have taken have somewhat of a possessive attitude towards Twitter and are are very upset over losing the bird, the the, the bird logo, excuse me. Um and so and and you know look I, I get I kind of get it, but I also it's like, okay, it's the company logo. It's it's their choice. Um I do find it, I'm afraid, a little bit confusing that if if this comp this organization becomes known as X and yet you're going to Twitter.com. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and, and, are you going to X or are you going to tweet? Well, you know, are you, yeah, are you, and and someone made the point. You know, X marks the spot. Okay, that might not be a bad slogan, but to tear the Twitter the Twitter branding down, um, you know, if if that had become a subtitle or something, or or the bird with an X on it or whatever, you know, yeah, maybe. But it, I I, I admit this one this one I'm kind of baffled by. Webb, I know you and I have I've been sort of borderline defenders of Elon saying there he, he seems to have larger strategies at work somewhere. We believe he does. Do you think that fits in with that theory? Hey, you know, I I, I, I certainly hope so. Um I, I'm not willing to to uh uh throw aspersions at Elon like a lot of people are. I was reading the um I get the strategy newsletter and there was an edition this morning about this very issue um and it was funny um i thought it was funny is uh you know must spent uh what 44 billion on twitter actually it was about half that the other half came from other investors banks venture capitalists things like that so but still okay 22 billion okay no, um he's still, he's still responsible for the full 44 i mean no no he's not no money. he's not no, he's not. Yeah, 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 he is. You know, half came out of his pocket and half his debt that, um, you know, well. Let, let's not go down that path, Mark. I, under, I understand your point. Okay. okay. Um, but uh, it, it, it was interesting. It, this article was saying that, uh, um, you know, he, he bought the company. He, uh, what, he, he fired most of the employees. He drove away all the celebrity users. And now he's changing the name of the logo. What did he buy? I mean, he 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 he, uh, he fired all the people. He trashed the code and everything that the Twitter was built around. Um, and now he's changing the brand. It's uh, I'm still wondering what his strategy is here. Um, but marketing uh, user base. Okay. Um, there is definitely whether we like to admit it or not. There's still a. a I don't want to call it a brand, but there's still a network of users that, that are still tied to it. Um, and there's some value in that. I'm not sure what it is, but, but he, he seems to be, um, what sort I want to use. He's pissing everybody off. Um, and I think that's interesting. Um, uh, it's still trying to figure. And then he tries to get to the single app. Uh, uh, what did this article say is that he wants to turn into the, uh, um, well, yeah, but uh, more importantly, uh, and I, Ben, I think you touched on it, uh, to, to become the biggest financial institution in the world by doing the uh, um, the the social side and the financial side and, and melding it all together. I don't see it. Um, maybe it's there. Maybe there's something that that uh, uh, I want want to get to. But I, I think he, at the end of the day, he's just unifying all his brands under the X brand. He has SpaceX and and the Tesla. He has a Model X, and uh, I think he's just X crazy. So there's my Web's, two bits. Yeah, Web. Somewhere a while back, I read I either heard an interview with him or read an article about him that. That he, I, and I don't know. I this is what I recall seeing, but that there is some precedent for his his ambition in in especially Africa, where everything is done on one app. And so, well, WhatsApp's done that know. same thing in China. 
So, yeah. So you know, is I mean, if he, if if that's his ambition, and he, and this is all part of that, then okay, maybe I can see him working toward it. I, I admit though, the the one comment, it just seemed like he is giving up a, a lot of a lot of mind share and a lot of intellectual property in trying to change the brand this this quickly. But on the other hand, maybe that's what you got to do if you're trying to move quick and get into that space before somebody else does. Are you going to uh, use an Elon Musk company for financial transactions? No. no. I, you know, I was asking Chuck, but I, you know, um, I, it just doesn't seem like, you know, <laughs> you know, this is not how you head in that direction. Um, well, Jim, I agree with that, but on the other, okay, so let's let's flip it around and say, you know. Five years ago, ten years ago, would you have trusted Apple to be involved in your finances? So they sure. partnered with some. They well, maybe we would, but they partnered with an established name. Now, mm-hmm. what established name is going to be willing to partner with Elon might be another problem. But I just, I it would be hard for me to imagine how he's going to try to take on that burden as uh, opposed to partnering there's, with someone. There's been there's been no point where Apple's brand was crazy. How about 1996 where, Apple, Jim? How was their brand crazy? Well, trading at three bucks a share and people thinking mm-hmm. it was going to get bought out by Oracle or IBM. And yeah, but, but everything but, but was but looking that's not, really sad that, until, I mean, that's, that's a, not the, that's not the same thing as my financial. That's not what by crazy. I mean that, you know, you know, Elon's brand now is nobody knows what he's going to do next. Yeah, and he he keeps doing you know things that are inexplicable that nobody understands. That that was not Apple's brand. Apple's brand was Pink. yeah things didn't seem to be working, but they weren't doing crazy things out of left field that you know were they alienating. Jim, they, you know, they weren't doing anything. They weren't doing anything. Well, they on, were doing the, things. There there Come was on. the pink <laughs> the the operating system pink. You know that was. Yeah. Oh, that was they're, they're, crazy at all. they're grasping it. Yeah, it's. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, don't worry. I, I, the Apple today is totally different than the Apple of the mid nineties. Um, yeah. But the Apple in the mid nineties was really kind of a sad case. Uh, and you know, Diesel was running the company. Not Diesel. Um, uh, that was his nickname. The no, the, 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 nickname. Ger- the German guy. Um, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just there's a lot of executive. Uh, uh, upheaval going on at Apple at the time too. You know, it, it, it's interesting, and I'm going to throw out this this issue, this thought, and see if anyone buys into it. I think people are more interested in following what Elon Musk is doing, or Mark Zuckerberg, or Tim Cook. They're more interested in what what the 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 CEO is doing than what the company's doing. They're, they're, the focus is on the individual and not necessarily on the company. I think there's an interesting dialogue that's going on there. Well, you could say that about Steve Jobs to some extent. Oh, but, exactly. You know, Chuck, Chuck, yeah. Chuck said, would Apple 10 years ago, would you, you know, give, uh, you know, use them for financial transactions? And I, I would submit that's a lot different than the Apple of 25 years ago. There's a huge yeah. difference from... 1995 to 2010 that's it's night and day not even not even the same thing and i and i think even by 2010 apple you know was a pretty substantial um you know and it wasn't off doing like you know careening back and forth and throwing away brands and and, you know making all kinds of pronounced you know Right-wing pronouncements. Oh, uh, you know, political. On the contrary, on the um, contrary, they had a, a very confused and broad product line. They had what at one point twelve different versions of Macintoshes. At one point, um, not in twenty ten. Uh, You're talking uh, about twenty five years ago. Jim, okay. let me make that. Did let you, me make. I, I I was picking ten years randomly. I was thinking just back when when Apple wasn't the dominant force that it is oh, now. Yeah. Yeah, and oh. and that that was the point I was making. So let's let's erase the ten year thing, and because I'm with Webb, you know, there was a point that that Apple did seem to be making a significant number of missteps. Oh, well, back mis- in those- you know, missteps are this. Are, I, I'm just, I think misstep is a. I think misstep is different than than being crazy. You know, what, than, than being crazy, which is you know, Elon's brand is not missteps; it's crazy. 
But, you know, also, if you, if you want to go back and look at Apple at that time period, then, then we need to say, well, are we going to want to do financial transactions with an Elon Musk company in 2050? Because that's the time frame, you know, from what you're talking about of all these, you know, where Apple was, you know, seemed to be falling apart. That was 25 years ago. So 25 years from now, that's almost 2050. Who, who, you know, maybe, uh, you know, some uh, Elon Musk company in 2050 will be all like, yeah, of course, you know, but that's, you know. Yeah. Hey, um, Mark has to go. Mark, thank you so much for being here. Um, where can folks find you when you're not hanging out in the vineyards? Let me Mark, unmute. Me. Okay, yeah. So uh, on, uh, you can find me on X, formerly known and widely known as Twitter, at M-A-R-K-F-U-C-C-I-O. So uh, great conversation. So uh, sorry I have to go early, but uh, enjoy the rest of the show, everyone here. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for, audience. Mark. Thanks for coming. Thanks Thank for coming. Bye-bye. Interesting description. The the social network formerly known as. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, the X Twitter, some, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> X Twitter, that's interesting, Web. Yeah, that wonder if that domain's available. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Factor. Visit factormeals.com slash MacVoices50 and use the code MacVoices50 to get 50% off. I'm not sure which is busier, the end of summer coming up or the impending fall season just around the corner. If you're like me, Either way, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up faster with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. All three of those are a priority for me. That's why I've been enjoying Factor Meals. With Factor, I can skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning too, as much as I sometimes enjoy it, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality I want and need. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all I have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back to crushing my goals, or at least trying. This August, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered right to your door. Head to factormeals.com slash macvoices50 and use the code macvoices50 to get 50% off. That's code macvoices50 at factormeals.com slash macvoices50 to get 50% off. Thanks to Factor for supporting Mac Voices. Uh, I, yeah. I, I was looking at a biography of a friend of mine who worked at Twitter until recently, and now he's at Reddit, so I, I don't know how he seems to have weird luck. But <laughs> his biography was, you know, ex-Twitter, and I told him he needs to, he needs to change his biography to XX. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you had something to, to throw into this. Yeah, I, I was looking at the article that was posted, and I noticed that the the uh, CEO of Twitter had brought up, um, you know, some of the changes related to going over to you know, X, X.com. And um, in the message she had written, um, she said they're mentioning that the future state of unlimited interactivity centered in audio, video, video. messaging, payments, and banking. And, and I think about, you know, what... I think, you know, using Twitter as a, as a you know, micro blog, whether it's posting stuff or, or reading stuff, um, you know, it, I think of just the, you know, that, the, how it's designed with that short term, just the little, you know, snippets of information. And I certainly don't think of them as my go-to place for audio or video, you know, there, yeah, I'm sure there's, if I'm catching something with sports, maybe I'll see a clip of, you know, a, a, you know, a home run hit or, you know, a, a three-pointer at the buzzer, you know, whatever it is with related to sports or something of that nature, sure. You know, and I know that they're doing those, uh, I believe they're called Twitter spaces or maybe X spaces, whatever they're called now. But, you know, you get those those live audio type, type things going on. So I get that to an extent, but it's kind of interesting how she's pointing out, you know, some of these things that are really, at this point, very off-base and off-brand to what, I think the majority of people are using Twitter for, and, and maybe even 
how how they think they might be able to disrupt the game of of what current um, uh, other platforms are doing in those spaces and whether or not they can take a hold on them. So I thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, Eric, you've been awfully quiet during this discussion. Are you just uh, zenned out in your Japanese garden <laughs> there, or? You know, I find now that Twitter's X, I am so distracted by the the logo because I keep thinking X Windows, or I've I've seen the X logo, or I've seen X used as a logo or a symbol for companies all over the place. I can't help but think that that will become a conflict. Someone is going to be unhappy that Twitter is now called X at, or confused or whatever. And, and it, for whatever reason, I keep seeing X windows. I, you know, well, I mean, now it's it just be, reminds me of something. Now, now it's going to be uh, X's instead of tweets. <laughs> um, I guess it was on the Morning Brew podcast this this morning, the or yesterday yeah. morning, that they said that anytime you start putting X in a uh, in a web browser bar, you're just looking for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Elon cares, <laughs> yeah, or looking for something. Well, <laughs> thank that's, you, Ben. <laughs> that's probably part of that video strategy that Brian was talking about. <laughs> oh, there you okay. go. Yeah. That's where the money's going to come from. Yeah. That's oh, it. Hey, took us as long to figure it out. Took us as long to figure it out. I, one more thing, I promise, uh, Jim, to your point about crazy. I, everybody thought Elon was crazy for SpaceX. And now it's delivering the majority of payloads into orbit. Everybody thought Elon was crazy about the electric car. And now Teslas are all over the road. Everybody thought... Elon was crazy for the boring company and we have was. tunnels. Well, and, and maybe he is, but, but he has, he has working tunnels under Vegas and there are plans to expand. Oh, and, city. you know, he's, and he's already done the first expansion over to resorts world. And so, you know, maybe, maybe here's to the crazy ones. Yeah. Yeah. Top marks for that Maybe. reference. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. He doesn't. Thank you. He doesn't run really run SpaceX and Tesla on a day to day basis. Um, he doesn't SpaceX need to. Is, doesn't need to. He's got. Well, yeah. he doesn't need to. He, he, he's uh, the he leader. doesn't need to run Twitter on a daily basis either. It's and, not the role, uh, it, but it's not the role of the leader to 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 be in charge of day to day operations. That is not his role. That is not uh, Tim Cook's role to be the operator of Apple on a day-to-day -day basis. He sets vision, I, I, he sets strategy. That's what that's the job that he has. He does not have the job of being day-to-day. -day and in my control. point is he's he is doing that on Twitter and he's showing us, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people and myself included that are like, yeah, I'm never buying a Tesla because I do not want to be subject to, you know, Elon Musk is uh, you know responsible for my car and the whole system of that i, I mean it's that's very it, it's it's very yeah. compelling and, you know it would make perfect sense otherwise if he wasn't involved i i might very well run out and buy one i need a new car mm -hmm. um and there's a lot of neat things about the tesla but i just don't trust being involved with that especially on something that's so you know critical is not just the social media but you know transportation and and jim that's you know look that's absolutely your choice and you know uh, but 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 web makes a good point even jobs wasn't wasn't necessarily involved in the the day-to-day -day operations at 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 a meadows at a what's the word i want web at a management level um mm -hmm. that's probably not the right phrase but at an operations level, you know, he he was think yeah. about all the all the books and all the articles about he and Johnny Ive. And, you know, so he was a lot more design oriented and product oriented. 
And then Tim Kokova came along and he's more supply chain oriented, but he's not, you know. I, I think necessary. Tesla and, and SpaceX are being run well. Mm-hmm. The concern is that that Elon would jump in and decide that he was going to muck with it. That's my concern. Fair concern. Because we've seen, we've seen, we've seen how he, you know, how he, how he does that. So. I mean, um, this, this, I mean, I, I mean, Webb can be, uh, attest this more being a CEO himself. You know, he, he he openly admitted that he he did, he couldn't be shouldn't be CEO. He got a CEO. He's chairman. You know he's 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 the one that's backing up the finances of the, of each of these companies. So he's got. He, it just took him time to get this with with the way Twitter is now. But I still think it's crazy that him changing this. I mean, I mean we you know tw- tweets and Twitter is is a verb. <laughs> I mean it's an action. Yeah. And yeah. and you're changing it to X. <laughs> I mean. Everybody in the media has been questioning us. Every article I've read, or the, you, you got anybody making a comment. This is just an absolutely crazy idea. We shall see. Yeah. Hey, I want to get to a few other things, though, before we uh, need to cut out of here. Um, I'm going to throw a bunch of chat links in the chat rooms. Um, the first one is, and these are there's a bit of a theme here going. Um, well, that's interesting. Why did it do that? Um Sorry. Uh, the first one is uh, the first one is supposed to be the YouTube premium price increase, mm-hmm. um, which is the first of a number of price increase stories here we have t- today. Um, and Mike, if I remember correctly, you said you had some feelings. Are you, is your voice up to for you to express those feelings? <laughs> Are you up to hear my voice? Um, it actually sounds better. <laughs> yeah, because I haven't been talking. Yeah, we the, gave him a rest. So it's interesting because this actually came up over the weekend. I had a conversation with someone, and I honestly can't remember where this conversation was held, but I had one with someone, and I said, the issue I have with YouTube Premium is that it includes YouTube Music. I don't want YouTube Music. I want commercial-free YouTube. That's what I want. I don't care about the music at all. So when you sent this article today, I just did a little math. According to the chart in the article, YouTube premium annual for an individual is 100 and 140 bucks. Roundup, we'll, we'll add that penny to it. It's 140 bucks. That includes music. And uh, YouTube music annual, just the music by itself, is $110. So that puts the value of commercial free YouTube at 30 bucks a year or 250 a month. If you look at the family plans, the value of the commercial free YouTube bumps to six bucks a month. That's what I want. I don't want to pay 140 bucks a year and get the music. I want to pay 30 bucks a year and get just commercial free YouTube. And yet that's not offered. The real value in this is for the folks who want YouTube music. For folks who just want commercial for YouTube, this is a complete ripoff. Why would I pay this crazy amount of money when all I have to do is wait five seconds and click skip? Otherwise, it's silly. But I have zero use for YouTube music. So, but if I subscribe, that's what I'm paying for. That's really what I'm paying for. So give me commercial for YouTube for three to six bucks a month, and I'm there. Yeah, I I would yeah. I would completely agree. But you won't. Um, <laughs> I, no, I, mean, I also I mean, I mean, don't care about YouTube music, but I do pay pay for YouTube premium, and it's worth it for not. It, it, it's amazing. Night and day, the difference. Oh, and I've, and, I've, I've experienced and, and it. I know a lot of, I, I know a lot of other people that, you know, I, and I, I held off for a long time because I, didn't say, I, I can click through the click through. Oh, no. And, <laughs> but, but it's, it really, it's, it's definitely worth it. And I, you know, I wish they weren't increasing it, but I'll definitely pay it. That, uh, that, if I only had to pick one streaming service, that's the one I'd pick. I, yeah, it, I use it a lot, and I use it a lot more now that I have pre premium. I I, I, I could never go back 
I can't think back. of any any other commercial free service that costs as much as YouTube Premium does. And it it you know as 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 amazing as all these channels are that I subscribe to, the 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 value proposition to me just isn't isn't the same. Um, I I would rather watch sure. the commercials because the commercials pay for these creators to put their videos out well, there. I, and it's my understanding that enough of it. No, I, they, it's they, my understanding that the, cre the creators make actually more money if somebody that's a subscriber. Yeah. For when a premium subscriber watches it, so that's one of the things that I can tell. Music good. money. It's like, it's like no I'm, I'm, Ben, you've been trying to get in. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I was going to say, um, the ads are kind of on an algorithm. They start out where you can skip after like a couple seconds worth of ads, then they go, go progressively longer. Yeah. That's true. I think yeah. the longest I encounter is like 10, 12 seconds, something like that. Uh, longer than I've, that. Yeah, I've had them close to a minute that you can't click out of. You're watching different videos than me. <laughs> <laughs> the, some some allow you to skip, some don't. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, oh, that's, the, that's the other thing is the other thing is that I find that you know because uh, you know a lot of times the, the ad to the beginning, and so before I had YouTube Premium, a lot of times I was very reluctant to even watch a video because I'm like I'm not sure if I want to watch this video or not, but you know I may have to watch 30 seconds or even a minute of you know of ad to even see the first second of the content, at, at which point I may be like, oh, yeah, I didn't even want to watch this content, or maybe it's great. So now it's like I go immediately to the content. So um, it's, I, I, you know, I, it, it's me two people, you know, like there's, I know a lot of people that think like you. And, I, and like I say, I resisted. I signed up about a year ago. And I just, you know, finally like, I'm going to do it. I knew several people including my brother that was like, it's just great. And once I did, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, I, I could never go back. Um, and I do feel good because, you know, it's my understanding that the content creators get more when I watch it than when somebody watches the ads. And that's fantastic. I, I love that. I really do love that. But to, you know, again, doing the math, that's 30 bucks a year that goes to YouTube content creators. The rest of it goes to the music, and that's fantastic too. But again, I I will never listen to that. I don't listen to any streaming music services. I have the music I want. I don't want to listen to some <laughs> random music out there. So uh, I, how did, where I'll did pay you see that thirty bucks a year. Only thirty bucks a year goes to the content. I didn't, I've never heard that. Well, it's look, it's one hundred and forty total for an individual, yeah. and if you get music only, it's one hundred and ten. So that's 30 bucks difference. Music only is 110. Music and commercial for YouTube music. is 140. I didn't even know they offered music only. It, well, according to the article, they do. I, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying they don't. I just didn't know it. Yeah. So that's right. what I was basing those numbers on is if if music only is 110. And music and commercial I mean, for YouTube is 140. Give me just that commercial for YouTube. I, That's what I want. I would certainly it's, it's, sign up. I would. I would sign up for that too. No I would question. in a second. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's worth it for what I get. So I, yeah. I sign up for it. Right. I get that. I get that. I pay and, and you listen too, to the so music, though, right? I, I pay. No, I don't. Oh. Hmm. Okay, Brian, I'm going to try to get you in here. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. I was just saying, I don't know. We were talking about the crazy ones earlier. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm odd, but I love, actually, I actually don't mind the ads, maybe for a different reason. Uh, both in YouTube, you know, you get the ones that, you know, you can skip, and then you get the ones that, you know, kind of go on for the full, you know, 30 seconds or, or whatnot. Um, but I, I like those and the streaming services that sometimes will have the commercials just because it kind of breaks things up and gives you opportunity if you got to, you know, refresh a drink, you run to the restroom real quick. Uh, maybe you need to, you know, you, you want to not miss your show, but at the same time, be able to 
maybe catch an email real quick or, or respond to something. Um, I, I love that opportunity. And I know I, I laugh with my, some members of my family who, you know, they, they I can't stand the commercials and they, you know, they love their Apple TV uh, plus subscription. Uh, and as do I, you know, I love, the, I love a lot of the content, the shows, but um, even, even when uh, the other streaming services, you know, uh, and I saw the link earlier about Peacock and um, the di- different streaming services that have, you know, the option, you can either pay more and either get no commercials or very limited commercials, or you pay mm-hmm. the lesser amount and you get the version that has uh, commercials more frequently, N- not even from a financial standpoint, but just from the sheer fact that it can allows me to step away for a moment and then come back. So I, I appreciate that. The Mac Voices Live panel continues our discussion of video service pricing and bundling and how it's being delivered and what they really want. That's next time on Mac Voices. I'll see you then. As always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.